I'd like to thank again to the organizer for giving me this great opportunity to uh, share our work. So my name is Yin Si Wang. I'm from the Department of Medical Epidemiology and Biostatistics in Karolinska Institute, Sweden. So first of all, I'd like to repeat the motivation for, for incorporating machine learning in clinical assessment. And this is because, first of all, histopathology plays the central part in uh, decision making. However, the current manual assessment has a problem of large inter-assessor variability because of the subjective judgments. And another reason is, of course, we're always short of pathologists. And along with all the challenges that have been mentioned in previous speeches, um, they can uh, generate problems such as uh, cancer patients going to suffer from over or under treatment because of the errors in assessment. And also, the variation in access and um, quality in healthcare can lead to inequality for the cancer patients. So we believe that um, machine learning-based decision support system can be the solution to this situation, and it can actually make the current clinical assessment more reproducible, more accurate, and uh, safer. So this current project is a sub-study of our large CHIME project. So we uh, develop models to predict on um, clinical outcome using digital pathology images. And specifically, we take advantage of our large-scale epidemiological studies to uh, strengthen the development of a more generalizable model. And we also take the chance to uh, um, estimate the model performance on an unbiased population level. So, in this um, study, we especially focus on improving breast cancer prognosis. And next, I'll briefly introduce this histological grade, which is a well-established prognostic factor for cancer patients, for breast cancer patients. Yeah. And it can guide the treatment decisions. So, for instance, if the patients have lower score, lower grade, then uh, they may be saved from the more toxic chemotherapy. However, like I mentioned just now, so our pathologists have large inconsistencies when it comes to this grading. So the aim of our study here is to apply machine learning to improve this grading so that we can further improve this patient prognosis. And this histological grade is made based on the level of differentiation of the tumor. So we uh, assess the morphological patterns in the tissue and then give it a score, ranges from one to three. And this grade one is um, like relatively well differentiated, so it's less severe. And this grade three um, is a, the most aggressive case. Grade two, however, is an intermediate status so that uh, it has larger variance in the morphological features. And it actually um, has an inter intermediate risk of recurrence. However, this group of patients accounts for, like, uh, this uh, grade two tumors accounts for half of the po entire population. So because of that, um, this subgroup is what we especially focus on and we want to improve. Uh, yeah. And to achieve this, first of all, we uh, detect and localize breast cancer regions. And then we use deep learning to classify this histological grade. And next, we put special emphasis on reclassification of grade two patients into subgroups. And on top of that, we can then compare their survival outcome between these um, newly restratified groups. So the image we use are breast cancer itchy stained images um, from ClinSec data, which is the Swedish cohort, and also from TCGA data set. And in total, we have 730 um, HE slides that were scanned at 40x magnifications. Mm, and this pie chart here shows the um, proportion of patients belonging to each histological grade. And uh, as you can see, that the um, distribution of uh, subtypes are quite similar between each other in these two yeah, data set. And next, for image preprocessing, first of all, we uh, extract this tissue mask 
to um, yeah, exclude the background area that don't contain much tissue in it. And then for the ClinSec data set, we have annotations for invasive cancer regions from two individual pathologists. So we can then calculate this um, annotation mask to further label the tu tumor region into, yeah, to further label the region into um, tumor and benign. And next, using these labels, we can then tile the whole slide image into small image patches of 299 by 299 to form our training unit. And in total, we have around 5.3 million image patches for analysis. And next, we apply blur detection and color normalization to control the quality of the tiles and also to reduce the variation in uh, the stains between slides. On the other hand, for the TCGA data, so we, we don't have annotations on most of them, so what we did is um, we took the tumor and benign image patches from ClinSec to train an Inception V3 model to predict on the cancer region on TCGA data, and we can also visualize the results using this type of heat map. And here's the result. Uh, for cancer and non-cancer detection, uh, we have a model performance of, uh, the, the AOC is 0 0.94 on tile level using our ClinSec data. And the images on the right shows two examples that happen to have the annotations on them. And this heat map shows the probability of uh, being tumor. So, yeah, from the result, we can see that our model prediction is, yeah, matches the ground truth pretty well. And then after obtaining the tumor regions from both the cohort, we then uh, develop an Inception V3 model to classify grade one and three. And uh, here is the model performance. So we achieved an AUC of 0 0.91 on slide level using both ClinSec and uh, TCGA data. And next, we apply this binary classification model on grade two cancer slides so that they can be further split into two subgroups, indicating a lower risk and higher risk. And we further compare the survival outcome between these two newly restratified groups. So here's the result. The Kaplan-Meier curve on the left shows the recurrence-free survival um, using their original histological grade. And as, as you can see, the orange line, which is grade two, indeed it has an intermediate, state, uh, intermediate survival rate. And it also shows in this picture that it has larger variance, so that uh, you see this line actually crosses the um, grade one and grade three at some time point. And after applying the model on this subgroup of patients, we then got the couple mayor curve on the right. So we show that uh, there is a significant difference in terms of recurrence-free survival between these two newly restratified groups. And we also conduct a multivariable analysis um, using Cox regression. So after adjusting for tumor size, ER status, age, and lymph node status, we have a hazard ratio of 2.86 yeah, yeah, on these two groups, risk groups. So it's a really promising result. It indicates that the model is providing some useful information for our grade two patients' restratification. And finally, let's look at two examples from grade two slides. And this heat map shows the probability of being higher risk that is uh, predicted by our model. And from the huge difference in the color, yeah, we guess that there might have been some distinct morphological patterns between these two, even though they were both graded as two. So we next look back to the whole slide image, and, and it's very interesting, actually, we, we saw that um, in this blue region, so there are large areas of this DCIS, which is a pre-cancer status, so that indicate that this slide is with um, lower risk. However, on the right-hand side, so in this yellow regions, um, there is full of this tumor region that, um, first of all, they don't have many tubes in it, and instead, it is uh, compact of this kind of uh, nuclei with large variations in their morphological features. So it seems like this, um, our model is on the right track. 
And in summary, first of all, I'd like to repeat that the histological grading is not yet reproducible. And uh, also we show in our study that this grade two carries less useful information for clinical decision making. And we also show that uh, machine learning based algorithms has the potential to increase the pro uh, prognostic value for this histological grading. So, of course, we're going to um, evaluate this model on independent test set, and hopefully in the end we can uh, yeah, eventually reduce the suffering for the patients. So finally, I'd like to thank my group members, especially my supervisor Matthias Rantalainen, and also my collaborators and funding bodies, and my special thanks give to TCGA, who uh, yeah, makes this study possible and makes my model works. And thank you very much for your listening. <laughs> Thank you very much. A lovely presentation and congratulations again on an excellent mm. piece of work. Uh, this paper is now open for questions. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm one of the pathologists who actually reports breast cancers. When you say grade two, was there that on a single cancer type? Or it was just grade two and it could have been any different type of cancer? Uh, what do you mean by any type of... Well, did you do it on ductal cancers? Um. Or was it a mixture of ductal, lobular, different types of cancers? Because they're inherently different. So you would get different prognosis with the same grade, but by a different type of cancer. Um, I think they're all ductal cancers. But... Can we have a mic? Yeah. Can I ask you whether you've looked at the, your annotations were done using pathologists. Have you looked at annotation using immunistic chemistry? Uh, no, the pathologists just give the annotations yeah. based on their visual inspection on the HE slides. But one of the so problems of cancer is that very often you get small groups of cells that are outside the line that the pathologist goes for, or there is stroma inside the line because it's, if you're doing it, just oh. round that. So when you get a more invasive tumor, it's actually quite a difficult thing for a pathologist to do, and it takes more time. So they tend not to do it very well sometimes, if we're being honest. So that would mean that using immunistic chemistry would be a very good way of doing it. If you used a standard cytokeratin uh, stain on this, you'd be able to probably validate it just a little bit better, I suspect. Thank you very much for the comments. I don't have much um, knowledge in pathologists, but yeah, okay. we'll try that then. Any more questions? Um, I have one question. Maybe I missed it. Um, so you, now you can, um, at a batch level, you can classify grade one, two, three, right? Or, uh, high grade, low grade. So at a, at a very local level. But how do you then go from this heat map to mm -hmm. a slight level label? Because you get a heat map and every location has high grade, low grade. But then you have to translate it to the slight level. How uh, did you do that? Uh, it's like we. Uh, we select the cutoff ratio based on the rock curve. So there is a general practice on how to map the tile level prediction on the slide level. So in our study, we just choose the proportion of tiles within each slide being predicted in the, as the higher level as the probability for this, um, yeah, for this entire slide. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Thank you.